Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to go over how to set up a security gateway or dream machine for VLANs. Now, I have the security gateway, so I really can't um, assign the VLANs here, but I will show you how to create them. And really the only difference between the security gateway and the dream machine is that the dream machine has a switch built in, and we can go ahead and apply those VLANs to the ports. On the security gateway, we really can't. We need an external switch. Um, and I haven't done a video on how to set up an external switch, so we'll go ahead and uh, show you that kind of as well. Now, the first thing is, if you don't know what a VLAN is, let's just kind of go over a quick uh, high-level overview. And that's just starting with the literal definition of a VLAN, which is a virtual LAN, which is also another acronym, so it's a virtual local area network. So what's a local area network uh, if we want to know what a virtual one is we really need to know what an actual local area network is and if you're familiar with your home network you know you have a router and you've got some devices maybe wired or wireless but they probably all have the same kind of ip address scheme so your router's ip address is probably like 192.168.1.1 and all of your devices are 192.168.1. whatever now this is your local area network. Your network is 192.168.1.0 and your usable addresses are 1 through 254. Now every device that's connected to this router, every device on this network can communicate with each other directly because they are on the same local network and anything that is beyond this network is considered the WAN or wide area network but you can pretty much think of this as the internet. Now, where virtual LANs come in is, say you have a different set of devices that you wanna be kind of separate um, from your existing devices. Like say if you want guests um, to connect to your network, but you have some kind of sensitive info already on your network and you don't want them to have access to it. Well, we kind of just wanna give them their own network to be a part of, just so they're not on ours. So typically what you would do is you would get another router and you would connect those devices to that and connect that to either the internet or to your existing router and it would have a different network over here 192.168.2. whatever and that's just an example and for every kind of subset that you want or every new network you're going to be adding routers and either connecting them together or connecting them to the internet and to add devices to each of these networks you have to physically connect them to the router that you want them to be a part of. So if you have many devices in your house, don't know why you would have that many, but if you needed, say, a switch, you would connect a switch to a router, but you'd have to make sure that that switch is connected to the router of the network you want it to be a part of. Now, I say all of this to get rid of all that with VLANs. So instead of having a new router and a new switch for every new network that we want to create, what we can do is just assign a virtual interface on our router that we already have. So 192.168.1.1 will be our main, we'll call that our LAN uh, network address. And we can just create another interface, we'll say 2.1, and we assign that a VLAN number. So we'll just say that this is a VLAN um, 10. And the VLAN number is kind of arbitrary. There, you, there is a uh, range that you can select, but it's really up to you what um, you want your VLAN number to be. And what this is, is it's two different networks on a single port. And if you have a switch that is VLAN aware, then you can assign, say, port 1 to the LAN, so it'll get a 192.168.1. whatever address. But then on another port, you can actually have that a part of a different um, network altogether. So if it's on VLAN 10, it'll have a 2. whatever address. And this is how you kind of merge a physical network into many logical ones. So instead of having to have separate switches and separate routers for every network, now it is all determined by this VLAN tag and it's done with virtual interfaces on the router. And that's really the high level overview of why you would even want VLANs in the first place. Now, the reason that you kind of want different networks for this stuff is for firewall rules. That's the main reason that we do this. Um, and that's because you can't really block traffic between two devices that's on the same network. You can, but it gets complicated and messy real quick. 
So one of the boundaries where a firewall works is between different networks. So we are able to create rules between our LAN and our different virtual LANs way easier to kind of allow the traffic we want to pass between them. And typically you'll create these VLANs like so. You'll have your local area network, which is your main one, devices that you use, devices you trust, yada yada. Usually you'll want to create a VLAN for something like Internet of Things devices. So anything that's really internet connected and cloud based that you don't really trust, uh, you'll make it make a network for that. Uh, typically you'll put phones if you do have uh, voice over IP services on their own VLAN and you'd probably make one for guests. Now that that's out of the way, let's apply it to the security gateway and or dream machine. I already have my dream machine set up and that's with the 192.168.1.0 network and that is the LAN. And what we're going to create today is going to be the 192.168 2.0 VLAN for Internet of Things and we're going to assign that VLAN 2 and we're also going to create a guest VLAN 192.168.3.0 and we're going to just name it guest and we're going to have that be a part of VLAN 3. So this is what we're going to set up today and with a security gateway you would assign these to an external switch like a like a Unify 8 port switch or Unify switch light, something like that. And then you would assign the VLANs uh, per port for the networks that you want them to be a part of. But if you have a dream machine, you have these ports built in. I believe there's four of them. So you can go ahead and assign them directly to the dream machine itself if that's what you're running with. So let's go ahead and jump into it here. Now, the first thing we want to do is define these networks. So each VLAN is going to be its own network. So we have to create networks for them. And that is done under the networks tab. And I am going to use the classic settings menu for this because it's what I'm most familiar with. And you can see that we have the two networks and these are default LAN and WAN. So our LAN is our main trusted network, 192.168.1.0. And then WAN is untrusted and that's got our, basically our internet settings already on it. So we're going to go ahead and create a new network and assign that the name, we'll do IoT for Internet of Things. And we get to select a purpose for it. So the main ones are corporate, guest, or WAN. Um, I'm not gonna worry about VLAN only, or any of these VPNs, the, we'll save those for other videos. But for this one, we're gonna say corporate. That's really just saying that it is a regular LAN. Uh, no special rules are gonna apply. This is gonna have the same rule set as our other LAN. Um, don't really know why they call it corporate. It's basically just LAN. And the network group, LAN or LAN2. So this really is just assigning the port, physical port on the device that you want it to be a part of. Now on the security gateway, I have two ports that I can use other than the WAN port. So I've got my regular LAN or my LAN or WAN2 port. We're just gonna keep this on LAN. So it's gonna share the port and make its own virtual interface under the main port. And we're going to assign this the VLAN tag of two. So this is really your VLAN configuration right here is this one box. That's going to be the tag associated with this network. And that's going to be the VLAN number that this is a part of. Now, once we have our VLAN tag, we can assign it a gateway IP. Now, this was going to be 192.168.2. Whatever. So I'm just going to keep it dot one um, that's going to be the ip address of this port itself and if we mouse over this little informational thing it says cider notation here so it includes the ip address of the default gateway or the port in addition to the subnet mask now cider notation uses uses a slash so for a typical class c network that's a slash 24 and as soon as we type in slash 24 that's going to bring up our network information down here so Gateway IP 2.1, broadcast IP 2.255, and we have total IP count of 254, and it shows us our range. Now you can get crazy with this and assign it like different network masks, but if you if you're not too uh, read up on IP addressing and networks, just I'll just keep it easy and stick with the slash 24. But you can configure this for however large of a network you want, depending on your requirements. Now I'm not going to worry about domain name. And we're just going to keep uh, IGMP snooping off. Um, actually, let's go back up here, update DHCP range. So we had that little button right here. And when we click it, 
it automatically fills in our DHCP server range. So I don't really, actually no, it looks like it did pretty good. So our DHCP range is gonna start at .6 and it's gonna go to 254. So that's fine with me, we'll, we'll keep that uh, the way it is. Now DHCP name server, if we leave it auto, it's gonna give it the same DNS servers as uh, this device has. So if that's fine, just leave it in auto, but if you want to enter your own DNS servers, you can. So 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 if you want to use Google, etc. Uh, best thing is just to leave it auto if you're not too read up on that. Uh, lease time, just leave that the same way it is. And the gateway IP, we're going to leave that auto as well. Now this DHCP Unify controller, you can put this in if you want. If you plan on adding access points that are going to actually be a part of this network, then you can put in the IP address of your Unify controller, and that'll enable it to uh, communicate with the controller. However, most of your wireless devices and stuff like that is going to be a part of your main LAN anyway, so we're just going to go ahead and not use that. And we're also not going to enable DHCP guarding. So let's go ahead and click Save. And you can see we now have the new network, IoT. It's on LAN 1, this is a subnet, and it has a VLAN tag of 2. Now let's go ahead and create our guest network. So we'll just type in the name of guest, and we're actually going to assign it the purpose of guest. And this is really just kind of a tag, it has its own uh, rules. Really this has to do with the firewall rules that are applied by default. A guest network is not trusted, so if we assign it the purpose of guest, then it's automatically going to be isolated. We're not going to be able to uh, communicate with the main corporate LANs from this network if we assign it the guest tag. Now let's go ahead and assign it a VLAN tag of 3. Put in our gateway address, which is 3.1 slash 24. Update DHCP range. And we're not going to worry about any of the other ones, so we'll hit save. So now we have our two VLANs created. IOT and guest. So that is step one. Now this LAN port, LAN 1, is going to be looking for traffic with these VLAN tags. Now right now we have nothing that's tagging these VLANs. We don't have a switch or anything like that set up. So it's not really going to differentiate anything yet. Now the next thing we want to set up is profiles. Now the networks and the profiles go hand in hand. If you've ever messed with any other type of switch, um, I'll just use Cisco as an example. Uh, typically when you configure a switch you will either make it an access port or a trunk or a tagged port and you'll associate uh, which VLANs you want to uh, be enabled and looking out for on that interface. That's what the profiles do on uh, the Unify controller. And if we go to the switch ports tab you can see that we already have default profiles and it's for each of our networks. So we have all and if we view that, you can see that profile name is all. The native network is LAN, so that's our 192.168.1 network, our main LAN. And our tagged networks, we have select all. So any port with this port profile will be tagging and looking for tags for all of the VLANs that we have configured. And the native network, or the untagged VLAN, is going to be our regular LAN. And if we back out of there, we can just look at the other ones. So we'll look at one that we just created, IoT. If we view that, the native network is IoT. So that will make whatever port this is applied to a member of that network. And it's not going to be looking for any tagged networks. So we won't be able to uh, trunk anything to this port. The main overview here, if you're just going with the default settings, is that you're gonna to want to apply the profile of all to any uplinks. So any switch that we have on this network connected to the security gateway, we're gonna to wanna to put that pro, uh, port into the profile of all. And then when we actually configure our switch, or if you're using a uh, unified dream machine, you would apply the profile of each specific network that you want that port to be a part of. And I realize that that is probably clear as mud, so I'm going to go ahead and connect a switch up so I can show you where we apply these profiles. All right, and I just went ahead and added this switch in here real quick. So if you are using a Dream Machine, you would apply these ports to the built-in switch. Um, it would technically be a part of the uh, Dream Machine device itself. It would be under the ports section, so this is where you would kind of apply it uh, if you were running a Dream Machine, but I am not. So we're going to open up the switch and go to the ports tab and you can see this particular switch has five ports and I've got port 1 and port 5 connected. 
Now, I went ahead and connected port 1 of this switch to our LAN port on the security gateway, and port 5 is connected to this virtual machine. And if we go to the edit button, you can see we have switch port profile, and it is set to all. And we can change that to disabled or one of our specific networks. So since this is the port that goes to the security gateway, I'm going to go ahead and name it uplink. And it should be in the port uh, profile of all. So that means that the native network is our LAN, and it's going to be tagging all of the other VLANs that we created for Internet of Things and Guest. Now, port number five is already a part of all. So by default, a switch has the port profile of all um, assigned to it. But let's say we want uh, this port to actually be a part of the guest network. So we would select our guest profile, and three is the VLAN number um, that's associated with it. We're just going to click apply, and it's provisioning the port, and I am now disconnected because this virtual machine was a part of the regular LAN, which is the 192.168.1 network, and we just switched the port profile uh, that it's connected to to VLAN 3. So let me go ahead and just uh, log in over here. This is the actual virtual machine interface. And if we go to our IP config here, do a release, renew, then we should grab an IP address from the new network that we're connected to. And there it is. You can see 192.168.3.7 is our new IP address, and our default gateway is 3.1. Now let's go ahead and change that back. We're going to go ahead and explicitly set it to LAN. We're going to apply that. And it's provisioning and we should see our remote desktop connection come back uh, behind here. And actually I just realized that I uh, made a mistake. So um, this computer, this virtual machine that I'm running, and you can see it now, heartbeat missed and disconnected for both of the devices. Uh, that is because this computer was the controller. So don't make that mistake. Um, if the computer you're using is the Unify controller, don't change the IP address or change its network because that'll cause it all to fail. And that's why that port didn't update and go back to the regular LAN because uh, I wasn't able to provision the switch or the security gateway because my controller was now on our new network. So don't do that. <laughs> Now I did change over this machine to another port that has the um, all profile associated with it so I'm just kind of waiting for it to come back up at this point. And we can see that the switch now has port 4 um, active. There we go and we were able to get back into uh, the remote session. So, so I realized that this video was kind of all over the place. But just to kind of recap here, um, in order to enable a security gateway or dream machine for VLANs. First, you have to create the network and associate a VLAN tag to them. And that's under the networks tab that we did first. And then second, you have to deal with the profiles. So creating the networks is what creates the profiles and then you apply the profiles to a port. And that's really the gist of it. And now that we have all of these different networks, we're now able to apply um, security settings and all that to it, which I'm not gonna go over in this video. I will do this in a different video, but we can start applying our firewall rules to each of these VLANs to kind of secure them even further if we want to. But hopefully you learn how to get your uh, feet wet with VLANs on the security gateway and Dream Machine. Um, it is a little bit confusing if you've dealt with uh, any other network devices before because typically, like with an edge router, you would create the virtual interface, assign it the um, tag that it's looking for, and then per port on a switch, you would kind of assign it um, an access VLAN or a port VLAN ID, and that would be how you determine it. Um, here, you create the networks and you assign profiles. It's just a little bit different of a way to go about it. So. Hopefully you learned something. Um, happy networking.